Shavua Tov, Agut Avoch, and welcome to our program. It's after the wonderful Yom Tov of Pesach, and now we have a mitzvah every single day, and that is the mitzvah of Sfirah Soemel. And as it is known, the month of Eod has this unique distinction that every day of the month we have the special mitzvah of Sfirah Soemel. Yes, in the month of Nisan, it's, we also do Sfer HaSoyimel, but that's only the second part of the month, and that is from the second night of Pesach. In the month of Sivan, we also do Sfer HaSoyimel, but that's only the first week of the month. Nevertheless, the only month in which we do this great mitzvah every single day is the month of Yil. The Nusach, the liturgy is Hayim Yim Echod Lo Eimel. Hayim shnei yomim lo emel. Hayim shleisha yomim lo emel. And the Rebbe asks the question that arguably, why is the Nusach that way? Why don't we say Hayim yim echad lo emel? And next day we'd say Hayim yim sheni lo emel. Hayim yim shlishi lo emel. We do not say that. We say and not or We will return to that in a moment, but first, our customary story. I heard the story from a Jew, Adiyeho, who said that his father was not well. The year was Tafshin Lamed Gimel. Um, the end of 72, the beginning of 1973. It, it, it was not 73 yet. It was in September. It was Erev Yom Kippur. So he asked a friend. His father lived in Yerushalayim, Elakadosh. And he asked a friend who went to the Rebbe on Erev Yom Kippur for Lekach. And he asked a friend that when he goes to the Rebbe and he gets his lekach for Erev Yom Kippur, he should mention the name of his father, Lirfu Ashlemo. And the friend did. And the friend says the name of his father and his mother's name. So the Rebbe says, Ehotach Nocha Nomen. He has another name. Oh, and you only... They checked... And he had another name. And the great excitement, he says, my father is not a Lubavitcher Choset. And only one time, 18 years ago, he wrote the Rebbe a letter one time. And from this one time, he says, the Rebbe gets tens of, tens of thousands of letters. And from this one time that he wrote the Rebbe a letter 18 years ago, the Rebbe remembered that he had another name. As mentioned, I heard it from a Jew a few weeks ago at the Ahel. The say concerning our question, why is the, the liturgy, the Nusach, that we say, Hayim shnei yomim lo emel, Hayim shleisha yomim lo emel, and, 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 and not, Hayim yim sheni, Hayim yim shlishi, Hayim yim elevi, arguably. The Rebbe answers this in way of explanation as to what is happening when we count Sphira. That it's not only that we are counting Sphira. Sphira means that we are counting for the days until Shavuos, where we're going to bring the uh, the Kodbun that we bring the, uh, of the that we bring the Abel. And the email we bring on Shavuot. But it is more than that. And the Rebbe brings Iran, Rabbi Nunisim, at the end of Psochim. And the nonsense says like this that we find that we find in, in Chumash that Almighty God said to Mesha Rabbeinu, in the beginning of the Sefer Shmeis, when you will take out the Jews from Mitzrayim, 
you're going to worship Almighty God on this mountain. Which means that what is what is the 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 epitome and what is the goal of Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Then when you are going to go out of Mitzrayim, then you're going to receive the Torah on this mountain. So Misha Rabbeinu went and he told the Jewish people, you are going to go out of Mitzrayim. And not only are you going to go out of Mitzrayim, there is another great excitement for you. That when you are going to go out of Mitzrayim, you are going to Tavdunas or Alakim, you're going to worship God, you're going to do service to God on this mountain, which means you're going to receive the Torah <coughs> on the mountain of Sinai. Says that on, he brings it from a Medrash, Omidole Yisrael. So the people said to Meshe Rabbeinu, Meshe Rabbeinu, Meshe, our leader, our teacher, a Mosai Avedozu. When is this going to happen? When is this going this great service at this mountain? When is it going to take place? Omar Lahem Samesha Rabbeinu answered them, Lesev Khamishim Yem, at the end of fifty days. So every Jew was counting towards the fiftieth day to receive the Torah. Says the Ran, Mikan Kovachachomim Lisfira So Emel. And this is why, because the Jews were doing the great counting. The counting for the day of Matan Teda. When will they receive the Teda? This is why our sages instituted the counting to the Emel to reflect the counting of the Jews when they went out of Mitzrayim. Mechashrin Nun Yem Lesimcha Satero, that we are counting 50 days, says the Ran. To the simcha of the Teda, of receiving the Teda, Kumeshem, Monu Yisrael, Beis Just like the, the Jewish people were counting at that time. This is what Aran says. So the Aran gives us an insight into the, uh, uh, what is the depth of, of the counting of the Emel. Because one would argue, yes, the counting of the Emel is a great mitzvah, but how do we understand the real depth of this counting? So we're not only counting for the Emel, we are counting for Matan Teda, even as the Jews, when they went of Mitzrayim, were counting for Matan Teda. So our sages have instituted the counting of the Emel to reflect the counting of the Mat- of, for Matan Teda. With this, the Rebbe says, when you count for something, it's understood. You count for something that you want, that you long for that you miss, that you want to come immediately. Moreover, the Rebbe says, it is the Teva Bnei Odom, the nature of man, is when you're coming a little closer to something that you want and you are not getting it, then the, the want and the urgency and the longing for that intensifies. And, you're, and, 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 and therefore, you're, you want it even more and more. Now the Rebbe explains that there's a difference if we say Yem Sheni, Yem Shlishi, or Shnei Yomim. Yem Sheni is a Mispal Siduri, which means it's an orderly number. First there's the first day, now it's the second day, now it's the third day. But we're also only talking about one day, Yem Sheni, Yem Shlishi, Yem Yerevi. When we say Shnei Yomim, we're saying it's already two days. We're already counting two days. So our patience is already running a little thin. Yim Shlishi, we're already counting three days. It's not only we're counting these days, we're letting you know that it's already three days that we are counting and that we are looking forward to Matan So every day our longing and our desire becomes stronger because it's already that many days that we counted and we want it to happen. So this is why our sages have instituted the language to reflect the longing. Hayem shnei yomim, it's already two days that we are counting. Hayem shlisha yomim, it's already three days that we are counting, and so on. It's already a week that we are counting. It's already two weeks that we are counting. And then the Rebbe brings a, a, a moshel that is brought in the Matemeshe, Matemeshe is, 
is a sefer speaks about Sfirah Soemer and the special counting, and also in Avud Raham, in Avud Raham, Hilchis Sfirah Soemer, they bring it. They bring. They bring a, a, a medrash, because some medrashim. This is parenthetic. Since some medrashim were lost, the only reference to that medrash we have is in their sefer. The Avud Raham brings the medrash. So we know there is such a medrash. And the Medrash tells a parable, an allegory. A person was in jail, and he was in a pit. And in his wildest dream, he never knew, he never could figure out, when is he going to go out of this pit? He's sitting here for years. There's no end in sight. And there's no way for him to know how long is it going to take until he's going to go out. Until one day, he gets a message. The message comes from none other than the king himself. The king is sending this inmate who is rotting in jail a message to say to him, I am going to make sure that I'm going to take you out of jail. And not only that, the king says, I am going to give you my daughter to marry. And you know when it's going to be? At the end of 50 days. Imagine for a moment how this person is going to count those 50 days. Every day is going to be another day closer. A day closer for his release, for his freedom, and a day closer for his marriage of the king's daughter. And this individual sits in, sits in, in, in jail. And, he, and how much does he thank the king? He says, not only did the king worry to get me out of jail, the king is even telling me that he's giving me his own daughter as a wife. How lucky can I be? The Moshal is to the Jewish people. We were in jail. 210 years. We, didn't, we were in jail in Mitzrayim. In under very, very difficult circumstances, everybody knows that. And they, and, they, and, and they gave us a lot of pain, and they caused us a lot of, a lot of, a lot of agony, and they, and they tortured us. They dealt ill with us, and they tortured us. And we never knew when the end is going to come. But Almighty God heard our screams. And he heard our cries. And not only did he take us out of Mitzrayim, he also he all, he even gave us this Chemdog Nuzo, the special treasure. His daughter, Detele, in many places, Detele, Detele is described as Almighty God's daughter. You find it in many Midrashim. He gave us, he gave us the special treasure, his daughter as a wife. So how much are we going to be thankful to Almighty God? Not only did he take us out of Mitzrayim, he gave us the precious Teda so that we can marry. And the Jews, and there, there are so many Midrashim who speak about Chosen Kale on, 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 on the day of Shavuos. Chosen was the, Jew, where the, the Jewish people were the Chosen, the Teda was the Kale, and so on. And songs are about that. So the Jewish people were, were counting with, with great eagerness with great love, with great affection, the days where they're going to go out of Mitzrayim and the days when they are going to marry the tailor, the, the great treasure, the daughter of Almighty God. So this reflects the Ahave, the love that the Jew has for Almighty God, that not only did the Rebbe take us out of Mitzrayim, but he's also giving, giving us the tailor. And with this, we understand the Pesach even deep more. Rabbeinu told the Jews, not only is Almighty God going to take you out of Mitzrayim, however, even more, you will receive the great treasure, the daughter of Almighty God, the Holy Taylor. Nevertheless, there's a preparation, there's a preparation needed. And it's also the counting of the of the emel. And Chassidus explains that the that the words "fira so emel" also contains another deeper meaning. Sfira means counting, and sfira means polishing, 
from the word sapir. Sapir means a diamond, that you, you polish the diamond. Yes, every Jew is a diamond, a great diamond. Nevertheless, a diamond sometimes needs polishing. It sometimes gets covered with dust, with other things, where you don't see the shine of the diamond. And one who is not a maven, when he takes a look at this stone, can sometimes discard it as just a simple stone covered with layers of dust, of earth. But you have to be a maven. And then you take this piece of this diamond and you polish it and you remove one layer and another layer and another layer until it starts it's it's sphira so emer it's sapir sapir is a sparkling shining diamond and every year we polish away another part of the eight 49 parts seven times seven as known kabbalistically until we come to shvuas seven times seven we, we polish all the parts of the eight all the all the details of the eight of the details of details of the eight and we polish all that away little by little. Every day, and so on. Then we go from chesed to gvudah and so on, as we see in the Siddur. And then usfalta means you should polish. And not only that, um, the Rebbe brings emel veomalto, the Pesach in Vayikro, lehazhir g'deli malhaktanim. What does lehazhir mean? Zoyahal also means the shine. Zoyahal horokia. Lehazhir gedele malaktani means not only that the, the that the elders should teach the the, uh, the youngsters, it also means lehazhir that they should shine. The elders should shine so much alaktani means that their shine should reflect on the younger generation, because there are two ways of approaching our youth. You can come to our youth and tell them, do this and this and don't do this and don't do that. That doesn't always work. The children don't like that when you tell them what to do. No one likes to be told what to do. However, when the elders shine themselves, this is what the Rebbe says, when they shine themselves and the young generation sees the shine on the elders and they, they say, and then they say to themselves, you know something? I would like to be like that. And so many times, you, you even say in English, a person should be a shining example. Shining example means that the youth should see the elders, as is the Rebbe, and they would see the shine of the elders, and they would want to be, they would want some of that shine to reflect on them. So therefore, this has a very, very deep meaning of sphira so emel, of polishing ourselves. And by polishing ourselves, we are a shining example to, to the children, to grandchildren, to grandchildren, to people around us. So when the great day of Shavuos comes, the Jewish soul is bright, it's sapir, it's a diamond, it shines. And we are ready to accept the tailor for ourselves and for future generations. Besimchov tuv livov with joy and with gladness of heart. And especially now, in this generation, when the Rebbe told us so many times that we're the last generation of Golos and the first generation of Geulo. So every Svela Soemel has a deeper meaning because now it's coming. Moreover, in our situation, where over last year the Jewish community all over suffered so much, and many people who were with us two years ago at the Seder were not with us last year at the Seder. And many who were with us last year on the Seder were no longer with us this year at the Seder. Due to the world um, situation that everybody understands. So now we have another great reason, a very, very great reason to celebrate we're going out of Mitzrayim, we're going out of the, of, of the old Golos. And we are equal to the Jews when they were in Mitzrayim. They were going out of Golos, and we are going out of Golos. 
ויציח עשרום הזה ממצרים תעבדו נסו אלוקים על ההוד הזה, we are going out to the Golos, and we are going to see in מיות השם the coming of משיח speedily in our days, not only in our generation, in our days, גזונת ההית ומפדי לך ההית, and Almighty God has given us such a schus that he didn't give to generations before. The many who, 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 who would wish to be in our generation, because they wanted to be in the generation of Mashiach, but they, they, for whatever reason, they did not make it to the generation of Mashiach. We, those who live in this generation now, Emil Tashem, will see with our very, very own eyes the Geulaho Amitis Vyashlimo that is coming our way speedily. Over Agolo Didan, over Simcho, over Tuv Levo, over Tiv, Anila Vianila, or Lemato Measolot Fochim, over Chesed, over Lachamim, the Takef, Umiyad, Mamesh.